This video introduces the concept of state space models as representations of difference equations. The previous videos then focused on continuous time models and now we want to look at discrete time models. It, was sh it is shown that the modeling processes are almost identical and hence some effort is used to show the analogies between the two because if we understand the analogies we get two for one. Consequently, the details are covered relatively quickly in this video. Now, we are going to assume that viewers are familiar with Z-transforms and discrete models. And also, we're going to make a big assumption, which is that without loss of generality, you can always take the numerator and the denominator orders to be equal. This is certainly the true in the discrete case because if necessary you can just add zero coefficients and that makes handling this problem much easier because you have a generic assumption. So here's a difference equation and you'll notice I've got a1 to an parameters on the output and b1 to bn parameters on the input. So I've taken the number of coefficients to be the same for the numerator and the denominator. And if some of these coefficients are redundant, you can just set them to be zero. Now if I write this in Z-transforms, there's two different ways I can write it. I can either use powers of Z to the minus one, as I've done up here, which is perhaps a more natural form for getting the difference equation. However, when we're doing state space models, you may find it easier to write this as powers of z. So you'll notice all I've done is multiply both sides of the equation above by z to the power n. Ultimately, it doesn't matter, but we're going to be using this blue form because it makes the analysis somewhat easier. Now, what we want to do next is look at state space equivalence for this difference equation. In analogous fashion to continuous time, the key principle we're going to use is to generate a first order matrix equation. You remember that that's what state space model is. It looks like a first order equation, except the coefficients are matrices. So we're going to do the same thing with a difference equation. So here's a first order difference equation. You'll notice we've got xk plus a1xk minus 1 equals b1uk minus 1. So an analogous matrix equation would look a bit like this. xk plus 1, where now x is a vector, equals capital AXK plus buk, where a and b are matrices. So this is a discrete state space model. This is the form that we are looking for. Now, if you are to take Z transforms of that discrete state space model, you'll notice a shift in time of one sample forward corresponds to a Z. So what we've got is XK plus 1 is Z X of Z, AXK is A X of Z, and BUK is B U of Z. So the transforms for this discrete model are easy to write down. Now what we want you to do next is go back and remind yourself of what you did in video 6. So in video 6 we took a Laplace transform and here I've given an example and we said can we find a state space equivalent for this. Now I'm just going to give you the answer because that was done already in video 6. You'll notice we wrote down well if you take transforms of the state space model you do something like this and you end up with this relationship. If you want to know what the underlying state space was there's a very simple way of doing it using canonical forms. You'll see that the coefficient 3 here has gone here, the coefficient 2 here has gone here, and so on. And you'll see that the coefficients from the numerator have gone down here. So we showed how that could be derived for continuous time system. But the key thing we want you to look at here is the relationship between the transform coefficients and their positions in the matrices and also we want you to focus on this relationship here. This relationship which says that y of s equals c si minus a inverse b times u of s. So we're going to use analogies between transfer functions because if you look now 
I've generated a Z transform transfer function, and you'll notice that it looks almost identical to the example on the previous slide. The only difference is that we've used a Z instead of S. Now, if you look at this yellow box, you'll see this expression looks the same as the previous page, except I've got XK plus 1 instead of X dot, XK instead of X, and so on. This expression looks exactly the same, except I've got Z instead of S. But otherwise, it's an identical expression. What about the transform expression? This expression, you will see, is identical, except for the fact that I've used Z instead of S. So the argument we're going to give is that if you can give me an A, a B, and obviously a C, such that when you use this expression here, you get the correct Laplace transform, then the same A, B, and C must give an identical transform in terms of Z transforms. So here you'll see the answer. Because I've got identical numbers in this transform, then I can use an identical A. So if you compare this to the previous slide, you'll see I've made A exactly the same, I've made B exactly the same, and I've made C exactly the same. So I can use all the results from video 6, and I've done this using analogies. I've not derived it, I've said, because all of the expressions are analogous, the same patterns in A, B, and C must result. OK, what if you weren't particularly comfortable with that and you say, I'd rather you developed it from first principles? So that's what we'll do now. State space model for generic second order difference equation. And the key thing we're going to do is create two first order difference equations. So the state space model looks like a first order equation. So we need to make everything look like it's first order. Here's our original second order model. You'll see I've got x k plus 1 plus a1 x k plus a2 x k minus 1 equals b u k. And I want to create two first order difference equations from this. So an obvious thing to do is to introduce a new state. And my new state is this one here, x1 of k. And you'll notice it's a delayed version of x. Now, if I substitute that, so I'll use an arrow, if I substitute that into this part of the equation, you'll see I can rewrite the top equation as x k plus 1 plus a1 x k plus a2 x1 k equals b u k. And now I've got two first order difference equations. I've got x k plus 1 in terms of x k and x1 k and that's from this equation here and I've got my new state which is x1 of k plus 1 is 1 times x k so you'll notice <coughs> just by generating two first order difference equations and then just stacking them I end up with my state space model and you'll see this is analogous to what we did with the Laplace transforms what if I've got a higher order discrete state space model. Well, all we're going to do is create a number of new states. So here's my higher order system. I've got rid of the B for convenience. I've just put UK over here as the input. So I've got XK plus 1, XK, all the way down to XK minus M plus 1. So it's nth order. So I need some new states. So here are the new states I'm going to choose. A delayed version of X, I'm going to call x1k. A version of x which is delayed by two samples, I'm going to call x2k. A version that's delayed by n minus 1 samples, I'm going to call xn minus 1. So my new states are all delayed versions of the original state. And there you can see that summarized in a slightly different fashion. Now, the key thing to note here is that x2 k plus 1 is only one delayed 
compare to x1. xn k plus 1 is only 1 delayed compared to xn minus 2. So what that means is I'm going to end up with some simple relationships I can use in a minute. But for now, let's just put the variables that we've got into our original equation. So you'll see wherever I had x k minus n plus 1, I put x n minus 1. Where I had x k plus n minus 2, I put x n minus 2. So I've now got my difference equation in terms of these new states. So let's summarize what we've got. There's my difference equation in terms of the new states, and this is now a first order, because I've got k plus 1 here, k here, k here, k here. So it's first order. Here are my other equations which come from the definitions of the states. A first order equation, a first order equation, a first order equation. So I've added n minus 1 first order equations. So now I can stack these all in the normal fashion. So xk plus 1, which comes from the top equation, you'll see has got all the parameters for my difference equation and multiplies all these states. x1k plus 1 goes from a 1 here because that depends on xk. If we go to the bottom, xn minus 1k plus 1, there's going to be a 1 here and that's going to multiply onto x2k. So we can create our models by inspection. You'll see all we've done, we've got the same sort of pattern that you saw with continuous time. You can see the ones here on the lower diagonal and the coefficients on the top row and a 1 in the top row of B and zeros elsewhere. Now the elements in the state vector capital X are all delayed versions of the underlying state X. So we've already shown that. So you'll see X1 of K is delayed by one sample xn minus 1k is delayed by n minus 1 samples. So what we want to do is see if we can exploit this observation. And I'm going to use the terminology that E subscript i represents a standard basis set. So for example, if I write E1 transposed, I mean 1 in the first position because it's E1, and then zeros elsewhere. If I write something like E2 transposed, it means I have a 1 in the second position and zeros elsewhere. So this is standard terminology for a standard basis set. Now why is that useful? Because if I want to extract a delay of one sample for my vector x, then I can use this expression here, E2 transposed capital X, because that will put a 1 in the second position it will extract the second element. If I want to extract something with a delay of n minus 1 samples, then I use EN transposed capital X because that will put a 1 in the nth position and extract this value here. So I've got a convenient mechanism for extracting a specified delay. I use this standard basis set. So how am I going to use that? Well, the previous slide showed that if we had a transform like this, and you'll see I've got bz to the n minus 1 in the numerator, then I've already shown how to get the a and the b, and if you choose the c matrix to be b and then lots of zeros, or equivalently b times e1 transposed, then that will give you the transform that you want. But what happens if I want other choices in the numerator? Well, look at this. If I choose C to be BI times EI transposed, then the numerator is now going to have a Z to the N minus I, because I is basically the EI transposed is going to extract a delayed version of the state, and therefore we get a bit of a delay in the numerator. And hence you'll see this one up here, no delay, n minus 1. And then as you add delays, you get n minus i. So if I want a generic numerator polynomial, there it is, the sum of b i z to the n minus i, I can get that by writing my C matrix as the sum of i of b i e i transposed. So here's an example. 
you'll see y has got a full numerator, 2z squared minus 3z plus 1. And perhaps to make this clear, I've got 0z cubed. You remember we said in the introduction, it's in your interest always to make these polynomials the maximum order that they can be. So the numerator can go up to z cubed. So put it in and write the coefficient, which here will be 0. So if I now do the state space model, you'll see the top row here is easy. That comes from these coefficients in the denominator, so that's straightforward. The b is easy. I just have a 1 in the top row and zeros elsewhere. And then all I do is I take the coefficients. The coefficient of the z cubed goes in the 1 position. The coefficient of the z squared goes in the 2nd position. The coefficient of the z goes in the 3rd position and the coefficient with the z to the naught goes in the fourth position. And there, I've simply used that rule, the sum over i of b i transposed z to the n minus i. So you'll notice if i is 1, you get z cubed. If i is 2, you get z squared. i equals 3, you get z. And i equals 4 you get z to the naught. So some remarks. We're not going to repeat state space to transfer function for discrete systems, as this is identical to video 5, with the only change being the use of z instead of s. And we're not going to repeat discussion of canonical forms, as again, this is identical to what was done for continuous time. Use of MATLAB is also almost the same, but there is one minor change which we should note. You need to ensure the models are defined as being discrete where that is necessary. It isn't always necessary, but in places it is. So when you're using ss.m, you need to add a sampling time so that MATLAB knows these a, b, c, d represent a discrete model. When you're using tf, transfer function to ss, you need to ensure the coefficients are done as powers of z. So we did say that at the start. Make sure you, you use powers of z not powers of z inverse. And remember that MATLAB assumes the maximum power comes from the length of the vector. So an example of ss.m. You can see here's the command. I've used ss, a, b, c, d, but you'll notice there's an additional input there. The last input is taken by MATLAB to be the sample time. And you'll see in the result here that MATLAB even tells you this model represents a discrete system with a sample time of three seconds. So it's interpreted what you wanted. What about TF2SS? So here's an example written in terms of powers of Z. And that's what we said, use powers of Z so that you don't make mistakes. So notice this has got coefficients 1 and 2, coefficients 1, 2, coefficients 1, 4, 5, 6, coefficients 1, 4, 5, 6, and MATLAB has generated the A, B, C, D for you. What about a different example? Now I've got z squared plus 2z. And this is one where you could easily make a mistake if you weren't careful. Remember to go plus 0. Remember that you need to note that the coefficient of the constant is 0. So when you put this into MATLAB, what do you notice? I've made sure I write 1, 2, 3. 0 when I enter it, because if I had just written 1 and 2, then MATLAB would have interpreted this, interpreted this as z plus 2, not as z squared plus 2z. So I need to put that 0 in, and then MATLAB works fine. So in summary, we've given a quick illustration of state space models for discrete systems shown that the conversion from transfer function to state space and vice versa are equivalent to the mechanisms used for continuous time systems. And there you can see the equivalence. You'll notice the analogous expressions if you replace s by z.